Uh, this was just, I throw this up because I gave a presentation like this in Italy at a big conference and they had hired these, this artist who was developing a graphic represent, summary of the presentations of each of the speakers and he knew nothing about me, nothing about Lean. And I was kind of pleased that somehow with all the babble that came out of my mouth, he, he got this. Uh, and he actually got the messages. And it was also really well put together. Uh, but one, to the right, that box that says culture that encourages experimentation and learning. And I was teaching this before I knew anything about Kata. Uh, put the customer first, continuous improvement, leaders at the Gemba, developing people and partners. To me, that was the Toyota way. And it's really the, the reason why you want to use the Kata and learn scientific thinking uh, is because that, of that philosophy. Now again, that philosophy is in the, in the foundation. It's a foundational to the whole system. Without the right philosophy, the system falls apart. So if you have a command and control mechanistic philosophy, there's no reason to do something like the Kata. People just come and go. And what you want are replaceable parts. The more you invest in people, the uh, more money you, it, it costs you, but also uh, the harder they are to replace. Uh, so there was a good story of a Jap Japanese sensei uh, coaching a CEO of a large company. And the CEO kind of figures out the level of investment required in people by this uh, approach. And he blurts out to the uh, sensei, but what if I spend all this time and money developing people and they leave? And the sensei says, what if you don't and they stay? <laughs> But anyway, that idea of this level of investment in people and we work on the process and the results will follow, don't worry about it, it's totally contrary to the thinking of traditional top-down command and control organizations who are interested in quarterly returns and, and results only regardless of the process. So the philosophy is very, very key. So what the what Chota Kata to me did was to, to take these principles that I'd been teaching and preaching and trying to convince people about and turning them into very concrete action. You know, how do you do this? And Mike said, here's the model, but how do you do it? And that's where the kata came in. So I was at the stage of the model. And what the kata added was were the principles, turning the principles into action. How do you do this? How do you get people, how do you clear up some of the concrete and get people to think more actively? Uh, I did teach a course at uh, University of Michigan that involves Zingerman's mail order, and I won't go into a lot of detail except to say that I did it for three years, master's students in industrial engineering, brilliant students, and it turned out by chance, exactly when I decided to, to create the course was exactly when Zingerman's mail order decided to uh, learn about Kata. And I met with Betty asking if it's possible for me to to send students to do projects in, in her where, in the warehouse, and she was thrilled because they were trying to figure it out. Uh, it turns out 10 students from Zingerman's came to my class each year and went through the whole course. So it was a really nice win-win. Uh, but one of the things I figured out was that these uh, students who were really smart and their brain matter was, act was much more active than ours, they are younger, uh, top of their class, and they're really bad at the kata. <laughs> they really struggled with it uh, at every step of the way. Uh, and it was because, they are, because of their mechanistic sort of closed system thinking that we should be able to solve the problem through theory, through models, through mathematics, through numbers. Uh, so understanding the current state means they go to the client, they collect whatever quantitative data they can, they disappear into their computer and they come back with charts and graphs. Uh, so getting them to actually observe the process was something new to them. They hadn't done it in any of their classes. Uh, so that was an interesting experience to see how, how much, how, and they came really far by the end of the course uh, using the Kata method. That was, that's the framework I used for the whole course. And I was, at first I was a little nervous that it was too simple for these really smart kids, but it wasn't. Uh, so, what I've uh, concluded is that the kata is at the center of the Toyota production system of scientific thinking uh, in order to continuously improve. And then respect for people means you're being developed 
that your boss takes the time and effort and cares enough to want to teach you and develop you. Uh, but you still need to have a direction. And uh, we have, this is Mike's slide where one way of getting the direction is through value stream mapping. But not the current state map with all your problems today, but rather the future state map with your vision of what you want the process to look like. And you can't do a good job of developing that vision unless you have, uh, well, you can't develop a lean vision, put it that way, unless you understand lean concepts. And in that book, Mike and John, but mostly is Mike, did a great job of uh, a short tutorial on lean thinking. You know, what is hey junk, uh, what is flow? Flow where you can, pull where you must, very simple rules of thumb. Uh, brilliant distillation into a very simple set of principles, but just like the kata, actually turning those principles in the book into a practice in a real situation is not easy. It's not automatic. You have to learn it. You have to learn about pull systems. You have to learn about standard work. You have to learn about one piece flow. You have to learn about visual management. There are, there are bodies of knowledge that you learn through doing, through practice with a coach. Uh, this, the body of knowledge can be summarized in the Toyota Production System House, which I won't go into. Uh, but the real challenge I found, and I've had a consulting firm for uh, the last 25 years, and sometimes it's been big and sometimes small. It's pretty small now, but we've worked with a lot of different companies. And when I'm in a consulting role and they're paying the bills, you have to kind of satisfy the customer. And they, they may not want to do everything you think they should do. Uh, so what I would like them to do is not this. You know, I've been writing against spreading lean across the organization using the tools approach my whole career, it seems. Uh, and I wanted to do this, to develop depth of capability. But in order to develop that depth of capability, they have to be willing to focus in an area first to learn and then start to incubate the process across the organization by bringing people to that first test bed of learning, the model line, uh, and then having them go back and go through a similar experience like they did in the model line in other, say, plants, if it's a manufacturing case, uh, and not just try to copy what was learned from that initial example. Now, the idea of piloting in a technical sense, if I were to pilot some new kind of robot in a plant and I have similar plants, once I pilot the robot and I get it to work, I then put the robot into the other 30 plants. So it's pilot to get the, to work out the bugs and then deploy. But with lean thinking, it's not like that because I'm not really deploying a technical solution. I'm deploying a way of thinking, a way of behaving. So the people that learned in that model line learned through this process and what you want to repeat is the process of learning, not the outcomes, not the solutions. So by definition, it's a slow process. And it also is kind of like the loaves and fishes that it multiplies magically. So if you start with one, and then you go to two, then you go to four, then you go to eight, you know, at some point, you're going to have a lot uh, in, and, and ha be broadly spread through the organization. But that takes years. So uh, the challenge is that. Uh, if I only were to dedicate myself to kata, to model lines, to going deep, like Mike says in his book, which I think is right, I wouldn't get many consulting jobs or I'd get fired a lot. And I did get fired just recently from, from a, a good consulting gig because we insisted on using the kata approach. We started using it. It was working great. But then a new CEO, CEO come, came along and he wanted results fast across the company. And he saw me as just a barrier, an obstacle uh, to what he wanted to do. So I was fired very quickly. Uh, but the other thing that's happened is that, and I think part of it is to do with uh, all these discussions I have had with Mike, and uh, starting to, to, I think, becoming more humble and realizing how little I do know. So I had to ask myself, if a lot of companies, a lot of uh, consulting firms are deploying lean tools, and getting results, equipment, OE, OEE, you might have heard of, but op, uh, overall 
equipment effectiveness. The equipment's running better, it's running at a higher level, uh, they're saving labor money, their quality is better, they're delivering on time, and they're doing it all through broad deployment of lean tools. Who am I to say that's a dumb thing to do? Uh, it actually can work. Deploying the tools broadly by skilled people can work. And we don't believe that it's going to have the sustainability or the, as big an impact as if they develop people who are deeply thinking and continuously improving within their area. But it does something. It does something good. So that's been sort of my struggle recently is how do you balance the broad deployment, relatively rapid deployment of lean concepts and tools and methods with going deep? And I don't have an answer to that, but that's the question that I've been grappling with recently. Uh, so for those interested in lean transformation, I, th I think Kata is extremely powerful. Uh, and I think it is a philosophy, it's a methodology, it's a way of developing the capability for continuous improvement and for meeting challenging goals that seem impossible at, at the outset. Uh, but there's also a body of knowledge of lean, uh, the Toyota production system, that is all very powerful as well. And really, I think the, 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 the best successes in creating highly effective organizations will be marrying the two. Or another way of putting it is that the scientific thinking is a core part. It's right in the center of the lean system we're trying to create. It's a system. It's not just an isolated set of practices. And if you treat Kata as just an isolated practice, you won't get the benefit that you can get from creating a whole system. Thank you.